Hey everyone, this is an Amalgia video for Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. In this video, we're going to talk about how to full clear the Dungeon Tita on Cycle 1. To get there, head north to the Miasma Stream on the first section of the map from Tipa. If you're still on Year 2, you'll need the Fire Element to pass through, but if you're on Year 3, you'll need the Wind Element to pass through. Fire comes from Goblin Wall, and Wind comes from River Bell Path. You can check what element your chalice is by looking in the lower right hand corner on the world map and change it accordingly at the front of a dungeon. Once you reach the area where the mine is and the mushroom forest, head all the way north and enter the miasma stream. If you're in year 2 it'll be water element, and if you're in year 3 it will be fire element. You can get fire element at the mine and water element at mushroom forest. Once you're through that miasma stream, this third section of the map is where Moshe Manor is, the capital, and Tida. If you haven't visited the capital city yet, you should probably do so. In the capital, you can get prepared for the dungeon, but you're also going to want to talk to a lilty named Nak Felma. He wanders around the city, and he has three different things that he can say, but they're kind of random, so you may have to spam him a few times until you see them all. He's going to initiate a long and cryptic side quest that I'll talk about in another video. After talking to him, the next step in that side quest is to get a drop of myrrh and then return and talk to him, so we'll go get our drop of myrrh from Tita now. Once you have all the gear you need, enter Tita in the northeast corner of this third map and let's get started. If you want to full clear Tita, it is a very long dungeon, so make sure to check your bonus point objective. Longer dungeons with more enemies means the chance for more bonus points and better rewards. First head left and grab the treasure chest near the entrance as it is a dead end. Then head right, but when the path forks, go north so that we can clear out another dead end. Tita has many skeletons in it. Some are warriors and some are mages. They spawn on the ground as piles of bones. They're pretty easy to see. The problem is, is that you can't target them when they're on the ground, so you have to go near them in order to get them to stand up. Grab this treasure chest and then head south back to the fork. Once you get there, head east. Here we encounter an old enemy and a new enemy. The old enemy we've dealt with before. Just take him down and try not to get hit with a rock on the back of his head. The new enemy is a larger version of an old one. However, his attacks are much more dangerous. This is a good enemy to fight at a distance if you can. It will make him use Thundara, which leaves him open for counterattacks. Trying to fight him at close quarters will make him rear up and release a poison cloud that has a large area of effect and will deal damage plus poison to people. Once you hit the eastern wall, head north and you'll find another pair of enemies like the ones we just fought. Once you kill them, keep heading north and then cut west a bit and you'll run into three more enemies. This will be the first time we encounter a skeleton warrior, and they're a little bit more annoying than the mages. They carry with them shields that can repel your physical attacks, but even if they're shielding, you can still kill them with spells. Also, as a side note, there are a lot of enemies that like to poison you in this dungeon, so a Magicite of Clear comes in handy. You'll be able to see treasure on the mini-map to the south, but we have to go around in order to get there, so keep heading west. Take out the skeleton enemy and then head down the ramp. In this section, there will be those little cats with the rocks on their heads, skeletons, bombs, and poison-spitting plant enemies. Remember that bombs explode after you defeat them, and you need to run out of the blast radius so you don't get hit with their self-destruct. Once you defeat this group, one of the bombs will drop a key. The keyhole is going to be covered in vines, and you need to cast a fire spell on it in order to clean it off. Throw it in the stand in order to open the gate. It doesn't matter whether you go south or west here first, but I'm going to go south so that we don't forget about it. There are two treasure chests in this section and a hidden Moogle den. The den is inside that dilapidated home to the northwest. I'm not going to show you the inside, but that's where you go to get the stamp. Head around the base of the other broken home in order to get the second treasure chest in this small area. Now we're going to head back to that western gate that we opened and bypassed earlier. The first thing you'll encounter through the gate are one of those little cat enemies with rocks on their head and two skeleton warriors. Once you defeat them, there will be a box in the southeastern corner of this section. After you grab the box, we're going to head northwest to get another treasure chest. It's being guarded by another skeleton warrior, but he only spawns once you get close to his pile of bones. Once he's dead, we're heading back out the way we came in. This is where we fought that big group of enemies, but now we're going to head north and deal with two large bug enemies. 
There's also a bomb to the north, and the bomb can actually be lured over to where the big bug enemies are, and if you kill it in the middle of them, its self-destruct will damage them both heavily. One of the large bugs will drop a key. You could throw it in the stand to the north, but we're going to continue east before we go through that gate. This eastern hallway is narrow, and it has two of those plants that spit poison. If you're playing offline and you have two fire magicite at this point, make sure to fuse them for Fira, as the spell is very helpful in this dungeon. Beyond these plant enemies, there will be a skeleton warrior and a skeleton mage guarding another treasure chest. Once they be all sorts of dead, grab the treasure chest and then we're going to head back west and then north through that gate that we walked by earlier. This is the second and last section of Tita. Unfortunately, it's a long one. This tree is used in another cryptic side quest in the game, but you can't initiate that quest until year 5, so don't worry about it now. First, head northwest. This whole area is full of spider web barriers, and we need to burn them in order to take them down. The bad news is, is that the spider webs regenerate very quickly, and it's very easy for you and Mog to get stuck behind them. Keep burning your way northwest, as there's a treasure chest over here that these enemies are guarding. Once they're dead, there will be one more web to the north, and then we can grab the treasure and make our way back. Once you're back in this initial section with the webs, kill the large enemy behind the web near you. He's in a very enclosed space, which can make melee attacks on him that much more dangerous. Killing him with magic and ranged focus attacks is the safest way to avoid his poison orb. After you grab his item, we're finally heading east. This bug is blind for some reason, but you can use that to your advantage when you want to kill him. Here the paths loop and wind, and we need to snake through them a bit in order to catch all the enemies that this area has to offer. The main thing here is to remember which enemies you've killed around this circle and try to work your way eastward. Eventually we're going to wind up in the southeast, so killing these ones in the middle and northeast is helpful. Once you've cleared out the ones in the middle, head to the southeast. There will be a key stand, a gate, and two bomb enemies. There are thorns covering the key stand, so you got to use fire on it in order to clear it off like we did last time, and then one of the bombs will drop a key. Once you're through the gate, there will be a little bit of a wide area that has two large bug enemies in it that are guarding two treasure chests. Once they're dead, grab the treasure, and we're finally working our way north. If you didn't kill those enemies earlier that were on the left side in that web area, now's your last chance to do so. At this fork up here, it doesn't actually matter which way you go, you have to go both ways eventually, so I don't know, let's just go left. There's another big bug enemy here in an enclosed space, but there should be enough room for you to keep a distance. Now we're going to go west into a large field and defeat three plant enemies that shoot poison. They don't have much HP and they should die pretty easily. Once the enemies in the field are dead, we're heading northeast so we can loop around and take the path that we didn't choose earlier when the fork split. Once you defeat this skeleton enemy up here, head through the northeast web in this room. There will be another large bug who's guarding a treasure chest at a dead end. Once you grab this treasure, we're heading south in order to clean up more of the enemies. Beyond this big bug, there will be two skeleton mages, but you can kill them with aura spells, either if you're solo or in a group and doing spell fusion. These two skeletons are the last of the enemies that we haven't beaten, so now we're heading back the way we came, toward the field. Once you hit the field, we're going to head west. This area has two skeleton mages, one that will be right in front of you, and then one that will come at you from the bridge. There is a treasure chest on the west side of this room, so be sure not to miss it. Ignore the bridge for now. That way leads to the boss. There's one more path that we have to take to the south through a spider web. This has another big bug in a narrow space, but then we'll grab the treasure chest and head north across that bridge. Up here is the last section of the dungeon. There are no treasure chests, but there are two large bug enemies, and one of them drops the key to the boss's door. Throw it in the key stand and be ready to battle Armstrong. Setting Cure and Clear will be helpful for this upcoming fight. Armstrong is supported by Skeleton Mages, and they need to be taken down first in order to be able to fight him safer. 
Armstrong likes to back away briefly and then follow you all over the map. If you get too close to him, he does a sweeping swing attack that will deal damage and knockback to anyone hit with it. He also has a cannon that will hit you with a non-thunder stun. His conal green breath attack will hit you with damage and poison. It takes a while for him to charge and has a high delay afterwards, so that's a good time to get in some strikes. Another attack that Armstrong does when people are too close to him is a large circular cloud of pink gas that slows anyone around him. You can cast clear in order to rid the status effect, or if you're a uke, you can just defend until it wears off. Skeleton mages respawn every 25 to 30 seconds or so, and when they re-enter the fight, that's actually when this battle is at its most dangerous, because they can sneak up on you from behind and you may not even notice them. While fighting Armstrong from a distance is probably the best strategy, it's possible to run in, bait and attack, and then run out and start charging something on him. One last note is that Fire and Blizzard are effective, and he is immune to Thunder completely. Focus attacks also work well. Compared to the other bosses you've fought so far, he has much higher HP. But if you keep the pressure on him with the strategies we talked about, he'll die quickly. That's all there is to it. I hope this guide was helpful. If you liked any of the information in it, please subscribe. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.